to use ChatGPT to write like my favorite author, here's what I did. I took something I wrote some time ago. During the lockdown, I worked on this book. It's called, I Can't Believe I'm a Dad. And it's a memoir about when I unexpectedly became a father in my early 20s. So I took the first 300 words from chapter one of my book and I plugged it into ChatGPT and I asked ChatGPT to rewrite it. Here's what the results look like. On the left hand side of the screen are the 300 words I took from my book. And on the right hand side of the screen is ChatGPT. And I basically pasted the sample in and said, rewrite this piece in the voice of Nick Cave. And of course, Nick Cave is a famous Australian singer songwriter who's also the lead singer for Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. And he's known for his dark and evocative lyrics that often play on themes of religion and death. So let's look at what ChatGPT did to my sample. In this particular book chapter, I write about when my girlfriend and I brought our son Sam home from the hospital for the first time. So I wrote, my girlfriend strapped Sam into his car seat and covered him with a blue cellular cotton blanket. Now, according to ChatGPT, if Nick Cave were to rewrite this piece, it would turn out as, in the thrumming hospital lights, my sweetheart buckled Sam into his cozy car seat, swaddling him in a blanket of blue woven cotton. So definitely more descriptive, flowery language. Although I'm not quite sure if that's something that Nick Cave would actually say. I also use some dialogue in my writing sample. So for example, I wrote about his grandmother who picked us up from the hospital and she told us I have the car all warmed up for the new baby. Whereas Nick Cave would apparently say, cars as warm as a womb. His freshly minted grandmother taps the heating dial with a knowing smirk. Yeah, I kind of like the dialogue, but to be honest, knowing smirk feels like a cliche from a badly written thriller book. Here's one more example. I described a conversation with Sam's grandmother when she said that the baby looked very like me. He looks like you, Brian, his grandmother said one morning over tea. With a large forehead and a crinkled brow, perhaps he did. Many newborns look like their father. So according to ChatGPT, this would read as, Brian, he's the spitting image of you. Now that's very cliched. I couldn't imagine Nick saying anything like that. His grandmother observed casually one morning over a steaming cup of tea. Another cliche from a badly written thriller book. Now I wrote, with a large forehead and a crinkled brow, perhaps he did. ChatGPT rewrote this as, with a domed forehead and a furrowed brow, perhaps he did. Nature's way of nudging fresh fathers out of the wild to take care of their own. Some of that is very cliched and some of that is a little bit flowery. But it was interesting to see what ChatGPT did with my article. Some of the other rewrites in the voice of Nick Cave felt a little bit generic. So for example, I described the moment when I gave our firstborn to a friend to hold and she didn't have any kids at the time and she was a little bit nervous about holding Sam. One of our friends in her mid twenties handed Sam straight back to me. I don't want him to get sick on me. So according to ChatGPT, this would read as, one friend barely past her mid twenties promptly handed Sam back. I'd rather not risk him puking on me. Now, arguably that reads a little bit more concise than what I wrote, but I'm not really sure if that's something that Nick Cave would write and it certainly doesn't match with his voice. I did wonder what Nick would think of the results, but I had no real way of getting in touch with Nick. So I went over to the Red Hand Files, which is his newsletter, and I was surprised to find that a fan had actually asked ChatGPT to write a song in his style and emailed Nick in with a question about what he thought. And Nick actually replied, so firstly, the song that was written using ChatGPT uses lots of dark and evocative imagery and flowery language like what I showed you a few moments ago. But what did Nick think of the results? Thanks for the song, but with all the love and respect in the world, this song is bullshit. A grotesque mockery of what it means to be human. And well, I don't like it. Although hang on, rereading it, there's a line in there that speaks to me. I've got the fire of hell in my eyes says the song in the style of Nick Cave, and that's kind of true. I've got the fire of hell in my eyes, and it's ChatGPT. So I guess based on that, Nick would not be a fan of writers taking their work and asking ChatGPT to turn it into something that he would supposedly write. Next up, I asked ChatGPT to rewrite my sample in the voice of one of the most successful authors in recent years. I'm talking about James Patterson. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually not a huge James Patterson fan. But you can't argue with success. He's best known for his fast paced prose that's characterized by short chapters. And of course he's sold millions of copies of his books. 
So could ChatGPT help me sell millions of copies of my book? Well, let's see. ChatGPT turned my sentence about strapping Sam into his car seat and covering him with a cotton blanket into my girl was fastening Sam into the car seat, tucking him in under a sky blue cotton coverlet. Now, these are terms and language that I would never use or write in. They struck me as terms and language that are specific to a certain part of the United States. I'm from Ireland, but it was interesting to see that you could potentially use ChatGPT to rewrite an article in a different tone of voice for a different audience, even if this necessarily isn't something that James Patterson would actually write. Like the car warmed up, said his newly commissioned grandmother, at least that's what I wrote, whereas James Patterson would say, the car's toasty. Don't worry. Again, I couldn't imagine using dialogue like this, but it is interesting to see that ChatGPT thinks that this is what James Patterson would say. I wrote, my girlfriend's mother brought the three of us back to her house half an hour from the hospital. She'd already made up the crib in the spare room. James Patterson, or at least the AI version, would write, my girl's mom steered us to her place about 30 minutes from the hospital. She'd already set up the spare room, complete with a ready crib, a stockpile of diapers and a mountain of baby wipes. Not a huge difference between my version and James Patterson's version. What about that moment when I described having a conversation with Sam's grandmother about how he looked like me? Well, AI James Patterson turned this into, many newborns take after their fathers. That's pretty much the same as what I wrote. It's nature's way of ensuring new fathers, wait for it, swap the hunt for home providing. Now that is different to what I originally wrote. I wrote, and when our friends and family came to visit, I wanted to show them what I'd learned about parenting. Because most of our friends were childless and were curious to see how we were getting on. Well, ChatGPT James Patterson version said, when our friends and family dropped by, I couldn't wait to show off my newfound skills. That sounds pretty much the same as what I wrote. Most of our pals, not a word that I would use, but certainly one that James Patterson would supposedly say, were still without kids and curious about our transition. I'd place Sam on their laps and reassure them, relax, babies are tougher than they look. I was also interested to see that ChatGPT did not break up this particular sample from my book into shorter sentences or paragraphs. That's probably because I was using short sentences and paragraphs in the first place, because I deliberately emulated the style, or tried to, of writers who have really easy to read and engaging prose. That said, I could of course give ChatGPT a prompt and ask it to break this up some more. And that's probably where the value of ChatGPT lies. You can prompt it and reprompt it to improve and edit your prose, and then take the results and rework it for yourself. But what about one of the most famous authors of the 20th century? I'm talking about the man who wrote The Old Man in the Sea and The Sun Also Rises, Ernest Hemingway. And of course, Ernest Hemingway's works have been in the public domain, so ChatGPT has lots of different resources to crawl through. So let's see what it did to my writing sample. I wrote, I carried him from the hospital door to a waiting yellow jeep in the hospital car park. AI Ernest Hemingway would say, I lugged him from the sterile hospital air, now that sounds pretty odd, to the awaiting yellow jeep, sounds odd too, in the cement lot. What's a cement lot? The cars got warmed, his fresh, out of the box grandmother gestured at the glowing dial of the heater. Now that sounds particularly strange. I couldn't imagine reading anything like that in an Ernest Hemingway book, even if it is more flowery than what I wrote. I'm glad you're here, I said. Sure I'm grateful you're here, I admitted. Now I did like the succinct prose or conversational dialogue that ChatGPT generated in the voice of Ernest Hemingway, but I didn't like the way it changed, I said, to weird words like admitted. Ask any writer or editor and they will always say you're better off simply saying said if you're going to write dialogue. Next up I asked ChatGPT to take my book chapter sample and rewrite it in the voice of the master of horror, Stephen King. Here's what ChatGPT came up with. So I used the term my girlfriend to describe my partner and I didn't give my girlfriend a name in this particular sample. Interestingly, ChatGPT decided to call my girlfriend, my girl, Sheila, buckle little Sammy rather than Sam into a safety seat, tucking him in with the baby blue honeycomb weave cotton blanket. So it's kind of changed the context and meaning of what I originally wrote. I described carrying him from the hospital door to a waiting yellow jeep, whereas AI Stephen King toted him from the sterile hospital entrance to our waiting 
Sunflower colored Jeep idling in the hospital's parking structure. There's that weird word again. I have the car warmed up, his newly commissioned grandmother said. AI Stephen King said the car is toasty, all ready for him. What about that section where I described a friend taking Sam or giving Sam back to me because she was worried he'd get sick on me? Well, AI Stephen King said, I don't want him spewing on me. To be honest, I didn't see a huge difference between what ChatGPT produced, writing in the voice of Stephen King versus James Patterson. Sure, both of these authors are from the United States and are one of the best known authors of the 20th and 21st century, but arguably the results from ChatGPT were a little bit generic. Are you ready for one more? What about J.K. Rowling? She's known for her whimsical prose, amongst other things. When I asked ChatGPT to rewrite my book chapter, here's the results. My better half, rather than my girlfriend, fastened our young lad, rather than son, Sam, into his tiny car seat, tuckling him or tucking him under a soft blue blanket woven of cellular cotton. Definitely more flowery or whimsical than what I would have written. The Jeep's toasty and ready, Sam's newly appointed grandmother announced, announced rather than said, I'm not so sure about that, tapping the dashboard's heating control with a grin. Oh, that sounds like a cliche to me. What about that conversation with Sam's grandmother? He looks like you, Brian, his grandmother said one morning over tea. Well, AI JK Rowling would have said he's the spitting image of you, Brian. Actually, that's something we say in Ireland too. She observed this one morning over a cup of tea. Given his broad forehead and crinkled brow, she wasn't entirely wrong. Whereas I said it was a large forehead and crinkled brow. Not too much changed. And what about that moment where a friend handed Sam back because she was worried he was going to get sick on her? Well, ChatGPT pretty much kept that as is, but it swapped out the word sick for vomit. So it seems like sometimes when you're using ChatGPT to rewrite in the voice of your favourite author, it will change some adjectives, adverbs, or in this case, nouns. Vomit, spewed, pukes, they're all pretty much the same, but just the context can be a little bit different depending on who's reading it. I also used ChatGPT to rewrite my piece in the voice of some of my other favourite authors, including Joan Didion and Raymond Carver. To be honest, the results were a little bit similar to what I've shown you a few moments ago. It'll swap around nouns, adjectives and adverbs, but to be honest, these authors are successful or were successful because of their storytelling skills and because of their ability to work with the written language. And that's something that AI can't quite do yet, even if it is able to produce results that, on first glance, look like something your favourite author might have said. However, I did find the exercise particularly useful for those moments when I have a little bit of writer's block, or perhaps when I want to learn more about the writing style of my favourite novelist or writer. That's because I could take something that I've written which isn't very good and ask ChatGPT to rework it and then I could play around with the results. In other words, it's helpful for figuring out the tone of voice for your writing. But you're not going to publish anything it produces for Batham. That's not something I recommend. And elsewhere on the channel, I do explain how you can use ChatGPT as part of your writing workflow. So be sure and check out those videos. Oh, and if you did find this video useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.